Hi, my name is Shabazz Stewart. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I've been riding in New York City for about 13 years now. And for my day job, I work for Uni. I try to bring secure, accessible, egalitarian bike parking to the New York, New Jersey area on scale. So a year ago, I was um, doored while riding my bike in New York City. And it was the scariest thing that has ever happened to me. Um, I was on the ground and I'm lucky to be alive. That's why collectively we need to recognize that strips of paint aren't real bicycle lines. They don't provide real protection. They don't keep people safe. Because two, three feet out is what we call the door zone. And people have to, if they're being experienced and they're smart, they have to ride outside the door zone. So there's only about a foot of clearance between the door zone and traffic. And if they're not experienced, they'll ride inside the door zone next to the parked cars and they're only an open door away from being on the ground in front of a car or in front of a bus on the road. And in addition to the door zones, we've got double parked cars that are littering the street. And this is important because cars that are traversing um, this passageway now have to themselves swerve into the bicycle lane to avoid double parked cars. And this creates sort of like a minefield bramble for people who are on bikes, right? You've got to now avoid the doors that are gonna fling open, and you've got to avoid the cars that are swerving into the bike lanes. We should have loading zones. If the, the enemy is not the delivery trucks, the enemy is all the parking. And behind me is a moving truck, and the moving truck is blocking the bike lane, and cyclists have to swerve into traffic uh, to avoid uh, hitting the moving truck. And you gotta look both ways for cyclists, for cars, so that they don't, um, injure themselves or injure others. But here's the big thing that's worth considering. It's not the fault of the people in the moving truck. People have to move, they have to get deliveries. We live in a city where people order Amazon, they order furniture, and that has to get delivered to us somehow. But unfortunately, we've chosen to prioritize car storage. We have three and a half million free on-street car storage spaces over practical items like uh, furniture delivery, like moving trucks, like deliveries for businesses. Bergen um, and its sister street, Dean, are critical east-west passage routes for Bike NYC, in particular people who are traversing Crown Heights, Prospect Heights, Park Slope, uh, and eventually Weeksville. And it's dangerous. We need to add protections. We need to add um, barriers so that cyclists don't have to worry about all these obstructions. Um, it's, it's common sense and it's something that's eluded us for year after year after year after year. But that's what we need to do in order to make cycling in New York City go truly mainstream. So we're standing here on the corner of Bergen Street and Flatbush uh, in Prospect Heights. And you know, after years of near misses and, and crashes, the city put up this protected barrier to guard against impacts between cyclists and vehicles. Right, what were you saying about this? Oh, this is great. This is exactly what you were doing. It's still a little bit too narrow but moving cyclists into a protected area um, as, a, as, a, as a ramp, an on-ramp to a critical artery, a critical uh, East River crossing. We're standing here at the mouth of the entrance to the new planned Brooklyn Bridge uh, cycling lanes, and it's one of the most exciting developments for people who bike in the city since the advent of City Bike almost 10 years ago. Um, it's going to open up Lower Manhattan for people who are coming from Brooklyn, and its importance can't be understated. Prior to this, you had to traverse the sort of roly-poly, topsy-turvy uh, boardwalk that is over the Brooklyn Bridge, and you had to be in this kind of like mixing zone with tourists and joggers and people just kind of meandering around, and it was suboptimal for both parties. Um, so you're gonna be in a protected lane um, with the cars, um, and you're going to be able to go much faster, much safer, uh, much more efficiently and with much more confidence to destinations like the World Trade Center, Battery Park City, Wall Street. We're going to see a gradual shift in people who are choosing to use the Manhattan Bridge just because they don't want to, they want to avoid the Brooklyn Bridge. And they'll come, over, they'll come back home to the Brooklyn Bridge and they'll actually make everything a little safer. You'll see decongestion on the Manhattan Bridge and you'll see people actually cutting their trip times to lower Manhattan. Um, so while we are taking a giant leap forward here with these new lanes, um, there's still room for improvement in the future. And I'm hopeful and optimistic that the next administration will see the success here, see the large ridership, and double down 
and even consider widening the lanes. So cyclists on their way between uh, Greenpoint, Williamsburg, uh, and the Navy Yard, um, and onwards to Manhattan Bridge, have been waiting for this protected lane for 10 years. Um, and now it's finally here, at least most of it, um, and it's too narrow. And the fact that um, people are actively choosing to ride in the road when they're going eastbound says as much as you need to know, that it's more convenient to ride in the road, perhaps even a bit safer to ride in the road, than to ride on a narrow, protected bike lane where you can't turn, you can't pass, and you're constantly watching your back and watching ahead of you to make sure you don't run into another cyclist. So we need to future-proof our cycling technology, our cycling infrastructure. We need to plan for not now, but tomorrow, when we know that hundreds, if not thousands of people per hour are gonna be using this critical connector to go between Brooklyn, Manhattan, uh, Williamsburg, Greenpoint, and points beyond. If I had to encourage folks to think about one thing, it's building not for cycling as an amenity, but building for cycling as a transportation ecosystem, thinking cogently about bike parking, bike service, you know, bike convenience, right? Building infrastructure that's transportation forward thinking, right? Thinking about how we can accommodate, not just in today, but tomorrow and the future when we're at 25, 30% mode share, because that's a city that we're all fighting to get to.